It's now time for our sports report with Renee Cummings. Thank you, Euro. We begin with a look at some intercall scores from games played today. The Saints marched home with a 1-0 win over St. Anthony's, and El Dorado had a 2-1 win over Barataria in the East. El Dorado beat Barataria 2-1 that score again. Barataria took the match into extra time with a goal on the final whistle and just in, Belmont defeated Fatima 1-0. We continue with more news of football and national footballer Jaron Nixon is in the money. Nixon has signed with the Scottish Premier Division club Dundee United for a total of £150,000 over a two-year period. The national under-20 player will receive a salary of £100,000 while his local club ECM Motown will get £20,000 for the transfer. Another £20,000 will go to the TNTFA and 10 to the legal advisors. Nixon impressed the Scottish club during his recent trial and according to Jack Warner the deal is likely to be increased before Nixon leaves for Scotland on the 1st of December. Nixon is expected home this evening and he will rejoin the national under 20 squad in training for the CAC games which begins next week. And still in football, Tobago's under-20 side registered a 2-1 victory over the national under-20s who traveled to the Sister Isle for a warm-up before the CAC Games. The Tobago players were certainly at their best because national coach and technical director Everett Galley Cummings was scouting for players for, the, for his senior national team. The under-20s are in action again on the weekend. And in basketball... In the NBA, Patrick Ewing had a 44 points for New York, but he still needed some help. Lance Starks hit just one of his first 10 shots, but made a three with 1.7 seconds left to force overtime in Cleveland. Charles Oakley's tip-in put the Knicks up for good. He had 19 points, 22 rebounds in New York's 115 to 107 win. The Knicks and the Houston Rockets are both 2-0. Houston's Hakeem Olajuwon had 29 points in a 106-92 win at Portland. The Trailblazers are 0-2. The Suns dropped their opener but bounced back against Sacramento behind 32 points from Kevin Johnson. Charles Barkley added 28 as Phoenix pulled away to a 132-110 win. Elsewhere on the scoreboard, the Nuggets got past the Clippers and the Nets held the Spurs to their lowest point total ever in a 99-73 win. Let's continue with some news of cricket and injury problems for Sri Lanka as they get ready for tomorrow's match against the West Indies in Bombay. Opener Sinka Gurusinghe is out with a groin injury. He is likely to be replaced by Chandika Hatarasinghe and Arav Aravin Aravinda De Silva is being treated for a cut hand. The West Indies have lost just one of their last 14 one days against Sri Lanka, who started the Five Nation Diamond Jubilee Tournament with a seven wicket defeat against India. And for news of golf, while well, a visit to Maui had a perfect ending for Fred Couples. He birdied three of the last six holes in the Kapalua International. He sank a 17 foot putt for a birdie at the 16th and won by four strokes. First prize, $180,000. Boxing and Evander Holofield against Lennox Lewis sounds good. Well, that could certainly be on the cards, as the world of boxing seems optimistic about a unified world heavyweight championship next year. Holofield be the champion bow on points to clinch the WBA and IBF titles. And that fight will certainly go down in history books for taking boxing to new heights. He circled about three or four times, and he knew exactly what he was doing. The guy coming on, what's that called, the hang ladder? Right in over the, to the lights. That guy was 30-year-old James Miller, who came paragliding into the open arena at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, interrupting the heavyweight championship bout between Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield. Miller landed on the apron of the ring with his parachute stuck in some overhead lights. When I turned around and I saw the guy hanging there, I was, I was, I was rather shocked. He hit the rope and he yeah. fell back and whatever he was wearing was like a harness. I think it hit people when he, when he came down. I think that's what happened. Miller's harness, including the prop assembly, slipped into the crowd, which quickly attacked the now tangled airborne intruder. Some witnesses say they went after Miller because they thought he might be trying to attack one of the fighters. Others say the crowd's reaction was more basic. I think it's a very just, angry. Yeah, very mad and a little Very scared. angry crowd, yeah. especially since Hollyfield was doing so well. An idiot. I thought it was the Inquirer trying to get pictures. Yeah. Miller's stunt not only angered the crowd, but the fighters, especially Riddick Bowe, whose pregnant wife Judy had to be taken to Sunrise Hospital for observation. I mean, you know, I'm not one to make excuses, but I saw that she was having a bit of a trouble. Miller himself had to be taken to a local hospital, not for injuries received from his flight, but from the beating the crowd gave him. He was treated for back, neck, and facial injuries and was then booked into the county detention center on charges of dangerous flying. 
Miller was bowed out on Sunday morning and so far hasn't given a reason as to why he wanted to jump into the ring. And let's continue. Jack Warner plans to meet with the South Zone this evening as he tries to convince the South Zone to accept his 14-point proposal, which is supposed to put an end to the impasse in local football. All clubs will vote again on Wednesday. And that is sport. Well, thank you very much, Renee. Coming up, Business Watch with William Lucy Smith. Stay with us.